Take the mark strip from before and hold it on top of a new sheet of baking paper and cut a slightly longer strip to line the sides of the 12cm diameter by 5cm height cake pan. This time we are not trying to make it any higher, we're just trying to measure exactly the outside and the inside base of the cake pan. Place the base of the cake pan over the top of the remaining baking paper and cut out a circle of baking paper to line the base of the cake pan. Set those aside. Lay a baking tray with a sheet of baking paper and place the base of the cake pan at the center. Mark around the cake pan to get a circle as a guide for the size of the pavlova cake. Now reverse the marked sheet because we don't want to print on that pavlova. Heat the oven to very slow, 100 to 120 degrees Celsius, 212 to 248 degrees Fahrenheit. In the same way you want to prepare all the ingredients such as bringing the egg whites to room temperature, and measuring up all the ingredients. Since for the pavlova cake, it is the exact same recipe and the exact same procedure for preparing the batter as the pavlova sticks, simply follow the procedures from before until you have the pavlova batter. Now take the cake pan lined with baking paper and gently using a spatula, lifting the ball above it and just gently scoop all the pavlova batter into the cake pan until it fills up to the brim of the baking paper. Another method is to pipe the batter into the cake pan, which I find more efficient for filling in the space. It may not be a smooth, flat surface, but that's okay. Simply spin the cake pan about one to two times to even out the batter. Do not drop the cake pan onto the table to remove the air and smoothen it out, because what you are doing is basically removing all the air that you just incorporated into the egg whites. Now take the baking tray lined with the marked sheet of baking paper Match the circle guide that you drew to the brim of the cake pan so that they match it completely. Then, with the tray directly on top of the cake pan, holding them tightly in place together, gently flip the cake pan so that it is now sitting on top of the tray with the base facing up. Now remove the cake pan and the pavlova cake should and the pavlova should roughly hold the shape of the cake pan. Remove the base of the cake pan carefully. Then gently and carefully peel off the baking paper around the sides and the top of the pavlova. Now using an offset spatula, gently smooth the sides and the top of the Now using an offset spatula, gently smooth the sides and the top of the pavlova. Try not to overwork this too much because by doing that, the pavlova will eventually expand bit by bit and become a bit too big for all your pavlova sticks to cover. Now using a large spoon in a swirling motion on the top of the pavlova, from outside going inwards towards the center, start applying very small amount of pressure to create a little well, something very vague, it does not have to be too deep, just enough so that the edges of the pavlova are a little bit higher than the center, maybe 3 millimeters deep. This is for placing whipped cream in the fruit so that they don't usually droop around the sides. This is a traditional procedure, but is not as important in my version, as I will have fences around the cake for the orchard. Now it's ready! Bake them for 45 to 50 minutes until the outside is dry and a pale cream colour. It should be firm when you gently press on the surface. If it still looks a bit wet, give it a bit longer. Once baked, turn off the oven and leave the door slightly ajar. Once cooled, remove the oven. Pavlova can be fragile as mentioned before, but once baked properly, it should be removed very easily. If you are worried that it might break, you can do it slowly by gently spreading your fingers across one side and gently lifting it up and then switching to a different side and continuing until you have all sides sort of lifted off the baking paper. That way it should come off without any sort of damage. Now for Chantilly or whipped cream, it is also in the same way better to use stainless or glass balls. So in a clean bowl, add the thickened cream or heavy cream for the US people. Place the bowl inside another large bowl filled with chilled water. You can use chilled water or just add cold water and some ice cubes to make it cold before putting a bowl of cream in. Or you can do what I do, simply just take the bowl and beater and chill it in the freezer for 15 minutes before using. It will achieve a similar result and is something that I have learned from joyofbaking.com. For Chantilly cream you might want to know that, unlike egg whites, the whipped cream actually needs to be very cold for it to whip to its full volume. So make sure you have cold cream, cold beaters, and a cold bowl. Here are the ingredients. For Chantilly whipped cream, you will need 150 milliliters of 
thickened cream. This is equivalent to the US's heavy whipping cream. Half teaspoon vanilla extract. Try to use the pure because it tastes better. 15 grams pure icing sugar, sifted. Do not mix up with icing mixture because that contains cornstarch and they are different. So since we are using icing sugar, it's actually quite different to when we beat meringue. Uh, icing sugar dissolves much more easily than caster sugar. So what we can do is we can actually just add all the icing sugar and flavoring to the cream at once in the bowl and then begin to beat it. So beat at a medium speed to avoid flying cream landing all over the place. Then once you begin to see these light trails as you beat, you can increase the speed to high. Look for trails that stay visible for around 3 seconds before disappearing, then stop as you have reached around the soft peak stage. To double check this, you can lift the cream with your beater and let it drip back into the rest of the cream and it should stay in a small mound like when we did the test with the meringue. Now what I like to do at this point is switch over to the whisk for more control. If you want to stay with the machinery, just make sure you keep an eye on it because it is very easy to over whisk, especially for cream. Uh, we are not looking for a stiff peak as this dessert is served with softly whipped cream. So something that is kind of semi whipped but has to be firm. Uh, the signs to look for are that when you whisk around the bowl, the trail or streaks formed from your whisk should stay in place and be fairly visible and it should easily clutch onto your whisk and stay a firm peak when you flick the cream onto the side against the uh, flip the and it should easily clutch onto your whisk and stay a firm peak when you flick the cream on the whisk against the sides of the ball. It should be white in color and still smooth with moisture. If it is liquid it means you are below the stage and if it is yellow in color and dry with holes in its texture it means you have over whipped it a lot and separated your cream into butter. You can use this immediately or if you don't plan on using it straight away, say you're saving it for tomorrow because you're serving it tomorrow when the guests arrive, you can simply transfer it to a clean airtight container and chill in the fridge. Remember to glad wrap it or it will dry out. Your softly whipped chantilly cream is now ready to be used. If you're whipping to cover a cake then you may want to take it a little bit further though so that the peak is firm and just barely curling at all. So as said before, try to make the time of decorating and garnishing as close as to the serving time as possible because I'm sure none of the guests or whoever you're serving to wants to see a flat cake that has decomposed and gone flat and everything and just ugly. And the taste is just different as well. It will become a bit soggy because you've lost the crispiness of the outside with the soft marshmallow inside. For garnish, the ingredients that you may use are 8 regular sized strawberries, whole ones, 8 regular undamaged canned peach, well drained, and 10 blueberries of uniform size. And if you like, you can drizzle with some sauce, such as strawberry coolie or any other fruit flavoured coolie that you like. Firstly, place pavlova cake on a serving plate. Now using a small offset spatula, you can use big or medium ones too, and it doesn't necessarily have to be offset, but offset is usually easier when you're doing this kind of job going around the sides of the cake, and being smaller is also more effective for doing smaller jobs. Scoop a small dab of whipped cream and apply to one area of the sides of the cake. Smudge it by moving your wrist in a motion from side to side as you go from top half of the side of the cake to the lower half. Then repeat until you cover around all the sides of the cake. Then with your offset spatula on a 45 degrees angle against the surface of the sides of the cake, gently drag along it to remove excess cream and smooth the sides at the same time. This should leave you with a thin smooth layer of cream just enough to stick the sticks on without oozing out when you push the stick onto the cream. Pick the best looking sticks and begin to position them on the sides of the cake like a fence pressing them upright onto the cream firmly to ensure that they stick on. Repeat and work your way around, fitting each pavlova stick right next to each other with as little gap as possible. Eventually you should have made a fence all the way around the sides of the cake with some sticks to spare. Then using a plain tip around the size of 10 to 12 millimeter tips, it doesn't have to be that exact, 
different to the other job that we did before, what we're going to do this time is holding the piping bag upright. It's actually going to help you pipe it more easily. Starting from the middle point, dab, starting, ho starting by hovering the piping tip above the surface, above the surface of the pavlova cake. Starting at the, starting by holding, starting by hovering the piping tip at the center above the surface of the pavlova cake, and then just let the batter drop as you pipe. Then working your way around in a circular motion from center outwards until you have covered the entire area within the fences. You can add a second layer if you think that's not enough and you really like cream. If you find that it will be too sweet though, you can also decrease the amount of sugar when you make the cream next time. Personally, I think this is enough with one thin layer because the pavlova is quite sweet. Okay, now to decorate with the fruits. Place one whole strawberry at the center of the pavlova cake. Then place whole strawberries around the edge near the pavlova sticks, leaving a little bit of space so the strawberry doesn't actually push the sticks and make them fall off. Then in a thin gap between the strawberries around the edge and the center strawberry, start placing drain canned peaches one by one horizontally around the circle with the curved side facing down into the gap and then leaving a space for a blueberry between each of them. You can really do it whatever way you want and with whatever kind of fruits you find suitable. Finally, you can drizzle strawberry coolie or any kind of flavoured coolie that you have made or prepared over your fruits in a zigzag pattern. What you can do to drizzle is put them in a squidgy bottle, one of those sauce bottles with a little fine tip. Or you could put it in a Ziploc bag, lock it, and then snip a small hole off one corner to use as an easy piping bag. Or just use a spoon to dip it and then drizzle it. Keep in mind that you do not want to overdo the sauce because drizzling way too much will ruin the looks of the pavlova will, will ruin the looks of the pavlova orchard and will look very ugly. What you can do is simply drizzle a little bit of zigzag pattern over the top as a little nice touch and serve the rest in a little sauce dish or bowl so your guests can just add more when they need it. Finally, you can tie a ribbon around the pavlova stick fence gently to make it look nicer and also hold the fence up too. All you have to do is wrap the ribbon around, leaving a little bit of excess just enough so that you can tie it into a nice ribbon having both even loops and a nice little tie on the end. Yay! So congratulations on completing such a tedious cake with so many procedures. It's actually a very simple cake and if you really can't be bothered obviously you could have done just the original traditional style but if you decide to do the pavlova orchard and got it done and you're happy with the result I hope you really really enjoyed the dessert. Obviously the cake can always be better with new ideas and new techniques and there'll definitely be new recipes coming very very soon so hopefully you'll be looking forward to that so you can look forward to that and so see you in the next video and i think you might be interested in seeing some of the stuff i've been doing at school and i have pictures of them enjoy see you next time forever could never be long enough for me Feel like I've had long enough with you Forget the world now, we won't let them see But there's one thing left to do Now that the weight has lifted And love has surely shifted my way Man.